Hello again, I'm Jane Willingale and in this video I'm going to run through the Lulu self-publishing process to line up with the Amazon KDP and Barnes & Noble videos that I've already done. So you will have three different options of the probably the most popular and well-known online publishing companies that are out there. There's a lot more but these are the three that I think are used probably the most. So this is the page you'll come to when you go to sign into lulu.com and if you don't have an, an account you can sign up here under register and just to point out that this comes up every week so it looks as if it's going to end quite quickly but I've noticed that each Monday it comes around again so you can nearly always get 15% off any orders that you put in for yourself. So when you sign in, you'll come up to this page. Your details will either be required or saved depending on your computer. Um, and then you'll come to what looks the same page, but you'll get my projects and my account at the top. So you're going to create a new book. So you click on create and you start to go through the choices down below. In this instance, uh, we're going to print a book rather than a photo book. So we'll click on print books and then you get your choices of the kind of book that you want. So we're going to start the print book process here. And we're going to have a print book rather than any of these, but you've clearly got the choice. And the goal for this book is to publish the book and um, sell it on Lulu's as well. Here we put in the first basic details, which is the project title or the book title. And I'm going to use the same book that I used in the Amazon process. It's going to be in English, unless you are a different language, of course. And select a basic category. Now this can be changed further on. So don't worry too much if you think you've got it wrong, but this is going to be a coloring book for children. So I'm going to pick children here. Add copyright info and move on to the next page. So you'll see the colouring title, sorry, the book title comes up automatically. And here you can add in your subtitle. Now, I rattle on about keeping a text file with all the details for your book separate. And you can have that loaded up and then literally just copy and paste as I'm doing here. It saves you hanging about or hunting around for information. Um, this is not a, an edition, this is just a, a standard book, so I'm not going to fill in the edition details. And for the contributors, it's going to be by me, the author, but under my brand name, which is Silver Zone Print Shop. You can add another contributor if you wish, if you've collaborated with somebody else. And in this instance, it's going to be uh, my print shop details as the um, copyright holder and it's going to be this year. Uh, the ISBN number is again a free ISBN by Lulu unless you've got your own and as I've said before they're expensive to buy and I think they're too expensive for this kind of publishing which is low content publishing. So I always use the free ones but Lulu have changed this they used to just add it in for you now you have to request the free ISBN and they give you a barcode to download uh, and you can't go further until you've done this so you've got to go through and do it so you need to then save it somewhere so I'm going to save it in the file that I've got for the particular book and just a little word of explanation the first time I did this it comes in an SVG format which is a scalable vector graphic and you can't open it in some programs I found that in order to add it to my cover I had to open it in either Illustrator or um, Affinities Publisher, which are vector graphic programs, and then resave it as a JPEG or PNG. <laughs> complicated, but it, well, it's not complicated, it's just long winded and it's slightly annoying because it used to be so much easier than this. But once you've got it, you can add it into the back of your uh, book cover and have it exactly where you want it, and make sure it's in the right place, and then resave your cover 
for the version that you'll need to upload later. You'll then click on design your book and move on to the next stage. And then here we're going to upload the interior of the book. And I've already got this ready, so it takes a few minutes, so I'll pause and come back when it's done. OK, so that's all done and it validates at the same time. And just to explain, unlike Amazon, you don't choose the size of the interior. It chooses it for, for you based on the, the size of the book that you've created. So in this instance, it's a letter size book and it's got 54 pages. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Lulu sort that out for you. Excuse my croaky voice, it's hay fever this year, it's been quite bad. And then you'll choose your interior colour, which is going to be, I, I'm choose the black and white standard. It's a slightly thinner paper. And the 60 white, which again, as I say, is slightly thinner paper and slightly less expensive because it's only a, a colouring book. And I like Lulu because I can choose coil bound as well as paperback if I want. Whereas uh, KDP and Barnes and Noble only do paperbacks and hardbacks. In this instance, I'll choose paperback just so I can show you the costings. The coil bound is slightly more expensive by about two dollars, I think, per book. And I like a glossy cover, so we carry on with that. And here we add the design template. Sorry, the the cover for the the book. You can download a template here which is slightly annoying because it means you've got to wait until the book size, the book interior is uploaded. It will then give you the correct size template for your cover. Now, <clears throat> if you've already designed the cover, you can simply resize it to that template. I do have on my website, uh, some of these already downloaded and you can download them direct so that you could set it up more or less correctly and then just adjust the size at this point if you wish. So I'm going to upload my cover. And again, I'll pause and uh, when it's done. OK, so here we are all uploaded and it gives you the dimensions, spine width, etc. all there. So, you know, the, the size is correct and this is what it will look like. So you can now check that your image fits inside their margins. And you'll notice that I haven't actually added the ISBN in here because this book's actually already been published on here and, and it's already had the ISBN added. Um, and that's the interior and you can flick through and make sure everything fits okay. So once you're happy with that, you can then add your book details. So again, you have uh, your file to hand, which you can copy and paste. So I'm gonna add the book description in here. Contributor notes are optional as they say and then we'll get into the categories now this is where you could change it if you didn't think you had it right in the first instance although i think children is, is fine for this and then this uses the the bizac main category sections and you can start typing um, to find the, the right categories for you so you do actually have to start typing you can't copy and paste in here otherwise it doesn't save it which is irritating, <laughs> but nonetheless, it in some ways it, it means that you can choose as it comes up. So I want activity books coloring. And then the next one will be games and activities for activity books. Uh, you can choose another one if you wish. So keywords, you can't copy and paste in Otherwise, if you've got half a dozen, it puts them all in as one keyword. You have to type them in, which is, again, slightly annoying and not how it used to be. Lulu have done some upgrades and redesigned their site over the last uh, couple of months. Not necessarily for the better, I don't think. Um, those of you who've never used it before should be absolutely fine. But some people who've used it before and were familiar with the process will probably find it very irritating like I do. But nonetheless, it is what it is and we get on with it. Um, so you type in as many as you want there. And then you can select an audience, which in this instance is for children. It doesn't contain any explicit content and then we'll move on to pricing. 
They change this as well. Before you used to just put the price in. Now you get to choose a revenue goal or a fixed price list. I've tested this. I found the fixed price list was the easier route to go. They give you a minimum price underneath that if you used those prices, you would make um, a profit on the basic um, countries that are listed here. So I'm going to just do that as they have set it for the time being. And then you'll see prices come up. And as I say, you, you do make a profit under those under the bookstore revenue. But when you go global, you make nothing. So those prices need to be higher if you want to make any kind of profit if it's sold abroad. Um, depends how much you want to make on it really. Uh, I usually stick a couple of dollars on there so if I make it 797 you'll see the prices reflect further down and you start to make some money further afield then. Play around with that and choose the prices that suit you. I personally don't rely too much on selling through Lulu Direct. I like to use it as a source for the print on demand for coil binding mostly and I sell that direct from my website. That's just an option that you might like to to choose instead. And then you'll select a payee which if you published one, a book on here before you'll have a list. Um, the tax form in fact, I set one up earlier which didn't have the tax form. You'll see that if you add it and you haven't uploaded your form, it gives you the option to upload the W8BEN form here. That's for those of us who don't live in the US but need to upload a, a tax form. So I've already done mine and I've uploaded it and it's been accepted. It does take a few days to go through so I can remove that one. And then if you click on the final review, you'll see all the details come up. And this is your point to alter anything if you haven't got it right or you think something is, doesn't work quite as well as you thought it would. And you can go back and change. And then you just have to click confirm on each of these sections, which I'm not going to do, otherwise I've got about three copies of this book on here, which wouldn't be advisable. <laughs> And once they're all ticked, then you can uh, go through and add to cart if you wish to order um, proof copies to see how it prints, which is quite a good idea. So that's it on Lulu and that covers all the three main uh, publishing uh, routes now. If you choose to go back and watch the other videos, if you haven't already, there is um, an option. Uh, down below in the description to download the template for the details in the text file that I talk about. It's a very simple file but it just gives you the list and the, it's a format that Amazon use or rather the process that Amazon use but it's exactly the same details in both Barnes and Noble and Lulu and I find it really useful to fill all this information in first so I've just got it there to copy and paste. Just to backtrack slightly, I realised I mentioned Affinity Publisher as a vector graphic program, which it is not. It's a page layout program. I meant to say Affinity Designer in case anybody gets a bit confused. I hope you found the video useful and that it helps to circumvent any problems along the way you may have. I think if you have a heads up of what to expect when you start these things, it saves on the frustration when you hit snags. I have a book coming out soon that covers the whole process for all three platforms as well as Etsy and a website. It will have a list of resources and access to some other free templates so look out for that. And If you'd like to be notified of the publication date sometime in June I think you can sign up at the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button so you get to hear when new videos come out. I've been Jane Willingale of Silverzone Printables. Stay safe and see you here again soon.